Okie dokie. Hello everyone that's live streaming with us on this evening. I would like to welcome y'all to our Tuesday night Bible study. And tonight I'm be reading from Psalms 123 and the New Living. I lift my eyes to you, O oh God, and thrown in, in heaven. We keep looking to the Lord our God for his mercy, just as servants keep their eyes to their master. As a slave girl watches, watches her mistress for the slightest signal. Have mercy on us, Lord, have mercy, have, for we have our, for we have had our fill of contempt. We have had more than our fill of scoffing of the pride and the contempt of the ignorant. And I have read for you Psalms 123 in the entire, in the entire and from the New Living Translation. As bow ahead and word of prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, I say thank you for this day that you allowed us to see, Lord. Forgive us for our sins, Lord, known and unknown, Lord. Continue to strengthen us, Lord. Lord, just continue just to uh, open our ears up, Lord, as we receive this Bible study on tonight, Lord, coming from our pastor. Lord, continue to bless him, Lord. And strengthen us, Lord. Strengthen him, Lord. And continue to bless him. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. 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 you are the father glory to your name thank you jesus hallelujah thank you lord we worship you jesus hallelujah Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord again. Praise the Lord. Oh, he's good, isn't he? Yes, amen. All the time. God's good. been a while, hasn't it? Yeah, yeah, man. Man. <laughs> Did y'all need a break? Yeah, it was nice. nice. Thank you, Bishop. Yeah, thank you. We appreciate it. Yeah, I can't be a slave driver all the time, so y'all, I gotta, <laughs> you know, look out for y'all and, um, you, you know, we work hard all during the year, so I just wanted to make sure that, um, that we take a break and rejuvenate ourselves and uh, go on. It, it, it's, it's been a while, so I'm gonna have to catch us back up and kind of backtrack a little bit and, and we'll kind of pick back up on part one. And um, I, I'm, I'm gonna do some new things as um, I am in training mode of all of our church members, especially our leaders. So, um, in between parts one and two and three of this three-part uh, series of this Bible study of how to study the Bible, 
I'm going to be letting um, some other teachers come forward. And, um, you know, I, I, I want to train everybody. Amen. Um, Amen. So, um, good evening, um, Barbara Walker. Glad to have you here, as always. If you was in greater faith, you'd be teaching here, too. <laughs> so, um, we're looking forward to um, all of this. And, um, Elder Elect Linden, um, we're going to uh, connect the screens in here where you can teach from Louisiana. Amen. Amen. So, um, Y'all just hang on. We gonna we gonna be. I'm gonna put y'all to work this year. Amen. I'm gonna be training y'all, teaching y'all, and um, and so we can all grow together. Amen. Amen. Um, and so we're we're thanking God for it. Um, next week we will be in Gulf Shores, Alabama. Um, as bishop, I'm I don't only travel, but I make it where um, you all can go to. So there's about seven or eight of us going to Gulf Shores, Alabama for the Christian Baptist Fellowship International Regional, Southern Regional Summit. So um, we're going to be going there and we're looking forward uh, to journeying uh, to the beach. Too bad it's going to be cold, but um, I did check the weather, so I'll be letting y'all know what it's like there. Mm -hmm. It won't be freezing, it'll be yeah, cool. Yeah, so we can handle it. Mm -hmm. All right. So that's good. Um, let us keep um, Sister Sophia Johnson in our prayers. She is in the VA hospital. I spoke with her, I think, yesterday. Uh, she was in good spirits. Sister Sophia, are you on the conference call tonight? Amen. She normally is, or she may be coming on. But um, Elder Alvin Graham and I are going to come and visit. Um, we thank God for uh, Sister Robin Baker, who is in Shan, should be released tomorrow. Praise the Lord. Um, so we're thanking God for his healing power on her. Amen. 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 Um, so we're thankful uh, for all that God is doing and has done. So last night I, um, everybody's talking about it is is consumed all the news about um, Buffalo Bill safety uh, Damar um, Hamlin went into cardiac arrest on the field last night and they had to cut his equipment open to perform CPR and they had to use a defibrillator on him on the field before they transported him by ambulance to the hospital. Um, so, 24 years old, and if he's playing in the National Football League, as Ryan Clark said, who's an ex-safety, also commentator now, he said, um, gentlemen like him is in the less than one percentile um, of healthy people. Mm -hmm. You know, as an NFL uh, ball player, um, you know, less than 1%, the best shape of their life, young, 24. He said himself that when he was 24, he didn't know he could die. Hmm. Um, you look, y'all, we always like that. I was like that too. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? You, death, you never thought about it. Right. it it's, it's not something when you, you, you're that age and you're healthy and you're all, mm -hmm. you don't think about you could die, you know? So um, that was a serious thing. And I think it was a wake-up call for everybody. Let me tell y'all something. <clears throat> do not take your eternal state for granted we could leave here just as fast as we can mm -hmm. y'all with me mm -hmm. so if you think you got time and you running around here oh I come to the Lord one day taking it nonchalantly you don't know mm -hmm. are y'all here mm -hmm. so um don't get stuck in a church and you're not getting what you need. It's a bunch of church folk not going to be with the Lord. <laughs> Y'all understand what I'm saying? Because they thought they were. Right. Okay. Right. You know, um, I ain't got time to be playing church with y'all. Your very eternity is at stake. And for me to be running around church 
entertaining folk ain't going to get you there. I take it seriously. If you don't, I do. Amen. So y'all understand. I ain't got time to waste. Um, you know, I, I know that I can leave this earth at any time. I know it. But to see what happened last <laughs> night is a wake-up call for everybody. Mm -hmm. So don't think that you're going to just be here. Amen. So um, take it seriously. Take your life seriously. Take your eternity, eternity seriously. Amen. Which is why we have how to study the Bible. Because um, it is in him, the Lord. That lies our life and death. He left his word uh, to us. And um, I had a conversation with someone a few days ago that has an issue. We all got issues. Y'all understand what I'm saying. And um, and I told him, I, I, I got the answer. And he was thinking the answer is in worldly or the physical yeah, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and I said well that that too but there's really something else and it didn't dawn on him what I was talking about and he was a little perplexed and I said spend more time with God and it was an epiphany to him mm -hmm. when he heard that um, I've been there where God in a dream, woke me up four o'clock one morning. This was years ago. I was living in Orlando, and the message from him was in scripture, out of context. On God could only God could uh, bring me a scripture out of context, as context as I am, and y'all know that. Uh, but for me to have to really look at it, and, and, and I know that's why the Lord did that, gave it to me out of context, so I would really look at what he was saying in his word. Mm -hmm. And I got the message. I was like, oh, you want me to spend more time with you? I get it, Lord. Okay. Mm -hmm. He will take your urges, your impulses, your habits, whatever, he will take them away. Hallelujah. But don't get content with that because the enemy will put them right back. So that's why we have to stay with him. Mm -hmm. Are y'all with me? Yes, sir. Okay, so the instructions for our life and death are in his word. Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. Which is why instead of me telling you everything you need to hear, you can go and get it for yourself. Hence why we have this annual Bible study called How to Study the Bible. Amen. So here we go. Thank you, Deacon Green, for opening us up. And um, you all want to have Bible study next Tuesday while we're in Gulf Shores? Um, sure. We did it when we were in Mississippi. So we'll have the camera. And um, so join in, same bat time, same bat channel. Next week we will have Bible study. Um, remotely. <laughs> Amen. So we will be on the uh, conference call and we will be on the live stream next week, Tuesday, even though we're in Alabama. Amen. So, how to study the Bible, part one. All right, they got a lot of loves on that one. Yes, Lord. Um, hey, Miss Trina, good to see you. Miss McCormick in Orlando, Florida, God bless you. Um, how to study the Bible, part one, observation. Discover what it says. Amen. Mm -hmm. um, we're going we're gonna to just start over. I'm not going to go as deep as I um, had went there, but there are certain things I will stop and go over. Um, so all of you all that are there, and we got a lot of likes and loves coming through. If you all want the syllabus right here, message me and I'll send it to you, okay? Um, if you don't believe me, ask Sister Walker, who is... Um, watching us right now uh, we mailed her the syllabus <laughs> all right so we did that so if you want it let me know and I'll make sure that you get it okay 
um, so you can you can um, read along as we go. All right. So, part one: observation. <coughs> Discover what it says. So, we have a bad habit of cliche versing. Hmm. Amen. What I mean by that is we we know these verses, you know, and um, I, I'm always. I used to be impressed with people that could spit out verses like that. And um, and those that, that memorize, I said memorize, didn't I say memorize? That memorize verses, that's what they do. They memorized it. But the problem is you don't know what it means. Because mm -hmm. a lot of times you're spewing out these uh, verses and they're out of context. You know, so um, but we, it, so when you do that, it has no power. Right. Um, and people be spitting out them verses. First Timothy, it was who says this, and I'd be like, "Good God, I wish I could do that, but not no more." Mm -hmm. Because everything that you're spitting out, I know what it means, and I know if it's in context or out. You know, so um, part one of part one is the rule of context, meaning context rule. Mm -hmm. All right. So now, step one of part one is we are to begin with prayer. Amen. Begin with prayer. John uh, chapter 16, um, verse 13 through 15. All right. Let's go there very quickly. John 16. Verse 13 through 15. All right. The word of the Lord says this. When the spirit of truth comes, he will guide you into all truth. He will not speak on his own, but will tell you what he has heard. He will tell you about the future. He will bring me glory by telling you whatever he receives from me. All that belongs to the father is mine. This is why I said the spirit will tell you whatever he receives from me. If we don't pray before we start Bible study, what happens? What, what, say again, conference call. You ain't going nowhere, Sister Ann said. Y'all tell me, uh, somebody tell me, you got the phone on back there, Brother Lorenzo? So that's just in case somebody back there says anything. But um, y'all listen. For all of you that be wide awake, right? And you pick up your Bible, say I'm going to Bible study. <laughs> what happens? You get sleepy. You get sleepy. Right? Mm -hmm. Come on, don't tell me I'm the only one mm -hmm. <laughs> that that happens to. We get sleepy. Mm -hmm. Satan will give you the best sleep you ever had. Then as soon as you close the Bible up, guess what? You wide open again. I'm going to go to bed. Now, I know you ain't. You know what I'm saying? So, um, but the more you, you, you get into it. Now, the word of God for me, because I'm so used to it, especially late at night. I get into the word, man, and I be wide open, you know, and I'll be up to 2 o'clock in the morning. You know, so I say this all the time for you all watching now. I am not one of those pastors that's going to brag to y'all about it. I get up 5 o'clock every morning. Spend it with the Lord. Man, I ain't turned over at 5 o'clock. I, I, <laughs> I, that, 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 my time with the Lord is late at night. So I'm not going to tell y'all that. I ain't getting up until I have to. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Did y'all hear what I said? Mm -hmm. So, um, and, and then when I do get up, I read devotionally. So, um, but my study comes at night. Mm -hmm. Amen. So I'm in the Word of God twice a day, sometimes midday too. I'm, I'm into it. Um, I'll take that, that prayer uh, break in a minute. Amen. So begin with prayer. Why? Because you want the Holy Spirit to speak uh, to you through His Word. Mm -hmm. Amen. Step one, begin with prayer. Step two, identify the context. All right. So inductive study begins with a thorough evaluation of the context. One of the most important principles of handling the word properly and studying the Bible inductively is to interpret scripture in the light of its context. Amen. Mm -hmm. Why? 
because context always rule in interpretation. Always. Context. So spitting out verses is not impressing anybody but yourself. <laughs> Amen. So y'all, some of us, and, and don't nobody get offended because I'm not talking about you, but man, we be faking it to make it. Mm -hmm. We trying to convince people with such Christians by spewing out scriptures and most of the time, nine times out of ten, they're out of context. You're not impressing anyone. Quit trying to make people believe you're a Christian. Act like one. I don't want to hear all that stuff. I, I hear the word of God all the time. Why would you want to come quote scriptures to me? Go do that to somebody that doesn't know him. That was free right there. Y'all understand? You know, we, you ain't impressing me. If I tell you I got a headache, give me a Tylenol. Don't tell me, oh, we ain't going to claim that. Man, get out of here. Y'all understand what I'm saying? So, but context always rules in interpretation. Context. All right? I preach that way. Whenever I'm preaching a sermon and, and you're going to get, on Sunday, we're preaching from Ephesians chapter 3. We're beginning the season of the epiphany. And I'm going to use some other scriptures of other people that got, see, I'm starting to jump the gun and tell y'all some stuff I don't need to tell y'all now, so I'm going to keep it moving. Mm -hmm. Amen. <laughs> so inductive study begins with a thorough evaluation of the context, which means if I read one verse, I may have to keep going um, until I come to a conclusion. And, and then I may still have questions, which means I got to back up and read maybe to the beginning of the chapter or two, three chapters ahead. Amen. So the word context means that which goes with the text. In general, then, context is the environment in which something dwells, the setting in which something exists or occurs. Now, everybody in this building tonight knows the answer to this, so please do not answer it. So, here's, here's the context question. You have a frog on a lily pad in a pond. What's the context? Y'all watching on live stream, tell me. Y'all on conference call, y'all know the answer too. So don't answer it. <laughs> but if you all are watching, um, again, you have a frog on a lily pad in a pond. What's the context? So we get a whole bunch of different answers. We will say the frog. Yeah. You know, okay, the frog is where? He's on a lily pad. Okay, is that the context? No. Why is the frog on the lily pad? Because he wants to get them flies. Y'all know that, that frog got that long tongue and he'll zap it quick. And when that fly comes around, look, he got it. Okay, that's why he's on the lily pad, right? Okay, so where is the lily pad? Floating in the pond. <laughs> right. So the context is the pond. While we may focus on the frog, the context is the pond. And there's many things going on in the pond that we don't see. What else is in the pond? There's fish in the pond that would eat the frog. That's, that's another reason why you're on the lily pad. You can hide. Right? So y'all see what I'm saying? There's a lot of things going on. There's minnows in the pond. There's flies around the pond. Why? Because they're eating something. So there's a lot going on in the pond that we don't see. And it's just like that in the text. There's something in that one verse that we don't see absent of the context. I hope that helps somebody right there. There's something we don't see in that one verse that's hidden in the context. Did y'all get that one? All right. That's another free one. I'm going to start charging y'all after a while. All right. So um, in Bible study, context is the words, phrases, 
and sentences surrounding a particular word, phrase, or sentence. Amen. This context gives meaning to the particular word, phrase, or sentence and helps you understand what the author is saying. Context can also be expanded to uh, paragraphs, chapters, books, and eventually the whole Bible. It all fits. Because context rules in or determines the interpretation of the passage. It is important for you to know the context of any passage that you're studying. Amen. So I'm glad y'all are hanging on with me tonight because we went over all of this, but it's been a while, so I just felt that we should start over. Am I right about this? All right. Step one, begin with prayer. Step two, identify the context. Step three, observe the obvious. Observe the obvious. Amen. When you observe the text, begin by looking for things that are obvious. In other words, things that are easy to see. Facts about people, places, and events always capture our attention. Therefore, people, places, and events are easy to see. Amen. Since these kinds of facts are often repeated, this also makes them easy to see. If you keep your focus on the obvious, you will discover significant or repeated ideas. These will, in turn, show you the context of the book, chapter, passage, or verse you are studying. Amen. Conference call, y'all okay with me starting over here? Yes. All right. Amen. Thank you all. It's been a while, so I just wanted us to not get lost in where we were and just start over. Amen. Step one, begin with prayer. Step two, identify the context. Step three, observe the obvious. And now step four, deal with the text objectively, which means quit looking for something for yourself. <laughs> step outside of it. This is why this one is called observation. Discover what it says. Stop trying to determine what something means until you know what it says. Um, Y'all listen to me. As pastor of this church, many times I've said something and somebody will turn right around. What he means is I think I'm capable enough to know what I said. Mm -hmm. Which means if I say it, that I know what I meant. Right? Mm -hmm. Quit trying to figure out what I mean if you don't know what I said. Because mm -hmm. you'll mess up every time, right? So if you if you would do me like that, you doing God like that. God could give you clear instructions on something He wants, and you you trying to go with what God means and you messed up. Let me deal with this. Um, in other words, let the text speak for itself. Don't speak for the text. <laughs> Amen. Observing the text in order to establish context must be your primary objective. Amen. So let the text itself show you its repeated emphasis. Amen. Repeated emphasis. Y'all caught that. So often I fear the only reason for being in the word is subjective, which means simply to get something for ourselves. Don't we always do it? Our prayers are subjective. Mm -hmm. Lord, heal me. Lord, give me. Mm -hmm. Not once do we ask, what's your will for me in this? I want what I want. Mm -hmm. Amen, somebody. Or we look for something that ministers to our heart. Or find a verse we can use to help someone or set someone straight. Don't we do that? Mm -hmm. How grievous this must be to God. 
who wants us to truly know him and to be sanctified or set apart by truth and his word is truth. It's said right here in John 17, 17. Watch it real quick. John 17, 17 says, make them holy by your truth. I am sending them into the world. No, nope. make them holy by your truth. Teach them your word, which is truth. Amen. So therefore, my brothers and sisters, our primary goal, our driving passion should be to know truth and then adjust our beliefs and lives accordingly. Now, granted, certain portions of any book you are studying might minister to you more than other positions or other portions, I'm sorry. But the truth and the context never changes. The message of the book itself will always be the same. It is truth, absolutes on which you can stake your life your character, and your lifestyle. So first, I hope y'all watching this. I hope y'all catching this. Look at the word objectively. Amen. Yes, God's word will minister to you personally. It will. It's a living word. But to discover the context, you must first look at the text objectively to discover the repeated emphasis of the author. Because he's going to say it over and over again. You ever watch the preacher when, he, when he's hitting that meaningful thing, he'll say it or she will say it. They'll repeat themselves because they want you to get that. Amen. All right. Just so you all can see what I'm saying. When you're telling your children something, and you hit an important thing you're trying to get them to hear you on. Mm -hmm. Do you repeat yourself? Absolutely. Multiple times. How about a simple thing of sending your child to the store to get a, a bag of sugar? <laughs> How many times do you tell them, I want a five pound bag of sugar. what kind of sugar y'all like the best? Just regular sugar is fine. Say again, conference call. Uh, Dixon Crystal. Oh, okay. Dixon Crystal. Oh, that's so brand. Yeah. So, so y'all listen. If somebody bring you something other than Dixon Crystals, when that's what you like, mm -hmm. and you sent your kid to the store to get a five pound pack of Dixie Crystals sugar, and they come back with that generic brand, mm -hmm. now you know you're mad. Mm -hmm. <laughs> You know you're mad now. So, you know, what do you do with that kid? You ain't going to beat him to death, but you're going to yell at him. Boy, I, I told you. you like she said, say, boy, didn't I tell you to bring me some bitch and little Yeah. Kid drop his head. That's what we do to God. Hmm. You have to repeat yourself. That's the same thing with the authors of these books in the Bible. They repeat themselves just like you do with your kid. Mm -hmm. Now do you understand this? <laughs> we do it all the time. Right? So, so y'all, repeated emphasis. All right? Then when you personalize the word, you'll know you're applying it correctly. And that's imperative. Amen. I must also caution you not to fail to look at scripture subjectively as well. It's just that you got to pull yourself outside of it to really see um, what's going on. But when you look at it objectively, then you can subjectively, mm -hmm. um, you know, get something out of the text. So when you pause, watch this, when you pause, when you pause to reflect on what God is saying and how it applies to you. That is when God, the Holy Spirit, quickens his word to your heart. When you pause. Amen. Quit running to look for something that you want. All right. That is when you know he has a message, especially for you at a specific point in your life. You just want to get married. You've got to have a fellow. Or, or, or a young lady. 
Because it works both ways. You just got to have it. Just got out of a bad relationship. Right? Mm -hmm. And you want to start quoting Proverbs 31. Ain't it 31? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. You ain't cooked not one flapjack. <laughs> Apostle Kenan Grant. Bless you, sir. Glad to see you. But y'all understand what I'm saying. You reading Proverbs 31. You ain't cooked one flapjack. You ain't sold one jacket. And you go out and pick somebody who ain't at the gate conducting business. You went and got home off the collar. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That boy ain't taking care of no business. Or at least the business he taking care of don't get him on the justice system. <laughs> Y'all understand what I'm saying? So, you know, quit quote me scriptures when you're not applying them or, or, or you're not looking at what what is God saying in my life? He may want you to be single right now. All right. So um, let, let me tell y'all this. Say you start praying for a husband or a wife. <coughs> y'all know God answers prayers. Right? God does. So you say, I want a husband. Or I want a wife. And God hears that prayer and is saying, okay, let me get him ready for you. Mm -hmm. But because you want something now, you go out and, and get somebody in the place of what God could give you. Mm -hmm. And you messed it up. Then I done that. Y'all, y'all hear what I'm saying? God got one in the oven for you. That's right. You don't want to have bait, Bishop. You don't want to have bait. And you go out there and get the same thing you just got rid of. Don't know. Oh, you God. want it to be full of baits with icing on it and some pecans and walnuts. Did y'all hear them conference call? Mm -hmm. I mean, y'all hear them? <laughs> you see, you They're telling it like it is. That's right. That's right. I mean, come on. Y'all. Everything. You want the right pie, the right cutter with the pie, the right plate. I'm just saying. Bro. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm just saying. You want, you want that pie with Dixon Crystal like sugar like in it. Right. And somebody brought you a generic brand mm -hmm. sugar. No, thank you. No, thank you. Got you got you got to put double what you would have normally had to put it to make it sweet. Y'all understand? Oh, I kind of like that. So, so I want a bootleg sugar, but I do want me some. Yeah, okay. I like me some splendor. The good, the good is all right. Yeah, yeah. But you didn't try to bake your cake with it either. Yeah, that cake would be a little hard. I tried that. Ah. Well, I had my sister Janice, who was a baker. I went and run to the store and got me a big old pack of that Splendor sugar. Mm -hmm. Took it over by some time and say, okay, I want a cake, but I don't want all that sugar in it. Mm -hmm. And I went and found some um, no sugar icing. Oh, okay. oh, that just sounds not good at all. Mm. It was good, but it was hard. <laughs> okay. And my sister was mad because she's a professional baker and she wanted that cake right. And when it didn't come, she said, bro, I don't know if you want that. <laughs> I ate a couple of slices of it and I was like, this ain't working. But y'all understand, that's what we do in life. We go out there and get something generic when God going to give you the real thing. Mm -hmm. All you got to do is what? Wait. 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 Yeah, wait. Don't you know that patience is one of the fruit of the spirit? Mm-hmm. Help me, Jesus. Patience is one. Of, and look here, what, what? What? If you got patience, what do you get? Joy. You get what else? It's another fruit. Love. Yeah, that's true. That's true. Sometimes it feels like long suffering. Long suffering. Homeboy feet might be stank from working hard all day. That's why they got soap and water. He can wash them feet, but that's the man you need. He worked hard all day. What you think is his feet gonna smell like when he pull them boots off? Lord Jesus, <laughs> Apostle Grant. 
<laughs> you with a brother, right? <laughs> so, y'all know what I'm saying? <laughs> I'm just saying, but you wanted, that's what you wanted. The man got, might have smelly feet. Huh. But we didn't watch them. Hope so, please. Oh my goodness. Lord have mercy. That man take care of that house. Yes, yes. Do like my daddy used to do sit on the front porch and take his boots off. Yeah, he did. That man was working hard all day. You know, the feet don't smell good. <laughs> I'm just saying, we ate every day. <laughs> y'all, y'all, y'all with a brother. All right. So, um, so we do there, there, in the word. It is something that will be subjectively for you, specifically for you. But you got to get outside of yourself and say, "Is it God? Is it your will for me?" If you can't spend time alone, you got more issues than you think. Mm -hmm. Did y'all hear me? Mm -hmm. you, you, you got some stuff you need to deal with. If you can't spend time alone, and it's how you handle that issue determines how long it will be before God gives you what you asked him for. Because mm -hmm. he will do it. But you can't help God. I done got off, I, I done jumped across the fence, but I'm going to come back in a minute. But don't we mess up all the time? Y'all, somebody tell me. How many times have we tried to help God? A lot. All the time. And what it, happens? Don't it out. Out. Uh -uh. And consequences? Mm-hmm. May as well just leave it alone. <laughs> Can I ask you another question? Do you think God needs your help? No. no. I know but he doesn't. We, but we think he does. And we think we'd be helping them, but we yeah, don't. We don't. We're doing it, helping not even ourselves. Somebody, I'm, I'm, I'm just saying. Mm -hmm. I'm teaching tonight, but I've done it too. So, mm -hmm. how you think I know? <laughs> Amen. So, at some time, I mean, y'all, y'all probably because I'm fired <laughs> up right now. At the same time that you study the Bible inductively. Read it devotionally. I said this at the beginning. Um, my pattern is that when I get up in the morning, mm -hmm. I read devotionally. Mm -hmm. If anybody laugh at me for what I'm going to say, I don't know what I'm going to do to you, but I'm going to do something. Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay. <laughs> well, you know we're going to laugh. Eh? I know you're going to laugh. I know you yeah, but... <laughs> My place is in the bathroom. <laughs> See what had to laugh at me. To read it, you to read your devotional? Yeah. <laughs> well, I ain't gonna laugh at you, but okay. okay. Cause somebody laugh and do it too. I mean read it's quiet and uh, look, I'm 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 by myself anyway. I know how to spend time alone. <laughs> But I, it's still something I do. I just it, it's comforting. I it's you know that's my place. Now, when you read devotionally, um, I'm not spending an hour in it. I may read a chapter. I may not even read a chapter. I may read a segment of a chapter. But in my devotional reading, it, it, it's probably it's a, a chapter, maybe a segment, maybe two chapters. It, whatever it is that's in the context is what I read. Right. Sets me off on my day. I mean, it, 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 it does um, the thing. I got a um, echo shelf. So when I set the alarm on there, when I go to bed, I'll say, Alexa, set the alarm for and then she'll repeat it back to me what time I said wake me up. So when the alarm goes off in the morning, immediately behind it, and I didn't tell it to do this, but I don't know how to shut it off, but it'll say, and it'll give me an inspirational word while I'm in the bed. Inspirational word for the day is, and blam, and it's always a good one. And I'd be like, and I, and I used to fight it, and I used to tell it, 
Stop it. Or, you know, and then do it anyway. And I'm like, oh. But I've learned to appreciate it. Amen. So, um, you know, I, I appreciate it. Elder King, God bless you, sir. Um, I hope to see you at the regional summit next week, sir. Tuesday, Wednesday. Amen. But glad you're here tonight. As a matter of fact, we're going to have a Bible study in Gulf Shores. Um, amen. But y'all, 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 y'all with me though. So that's my thing. And at night um, is when I study. And that's when I may be in it for a few hours. All right. You ain't got to do that like that. I'm just telling you what I do. You got to find your own pattern. So I know I'm preaching from Ephesians chapter 3, verse 1 through 12 on Sunday. So I know tonight, because it's in my head where I've been looking at it since last night, that I'm going to be working on it. So that by Wednesday I can start putting it in. But I got to read it in context. So which means I'm going to go a little bit further and a little bit further back to get the context. Because in, uh, can I share something with y'all to prove my point? Um, in Ephesians chapter 1, um, it's one of the prison epistles, right? Which is uh, Philippians, Colossians, and Ephesians, right? So watch this. Watch what he said. I'm proving my point. I, I, I ain't strayed too far yet. So watch this. Watch this. Sid Russell, my man. Y'all, he is my, um, my respiratory supply person. Sid Russell, who's watching, um, that's my brother. His, his sons are my nephews. Um, they play for Newberry High School, and I like to go watch them play. Bryce is graduating, but we got Brother Ben, who's coming right behind him. Um, so um, that's all going to be good. So no, Ephesians chapter 3. I'm sorry, y'all. But good to see you, Sid. All right, in Ephesians chapter 3, I want y'all to see this because it's proving my point about the context, all right? So I just I just told you all that I'm preaching from Ephesians <coughs> chapter 3, verses 1 through 12 on Sunday. I normally don't, don't tell it like that, but I told y'all, all right? So watch, watch the first, the A clause of verse 1 of Ephesians chapter 3, one of the prison epistles, which means Paul was in prison when he wrote them. All right, y'all ready? So here's what verse 1, the A clause says. When I think of all this. Did y'all see that? So what does that tell you when you read something like that? Do you just skip past that like he didn't say it? What does that mean to you? When you see, when I think of all this. Think of all what? Find out all what? I'm proving my point here. And matter of fact, I'm just going to stop. No, I got a little bit more here. Um, no, I'm going to stop because I, I want to ride this. Okay, so we're talking about uh, context. Okay, so now, again, when I think of all this, what do you do with that? Do you keep going? What do you have to do now? When you read something like that, what do you do? You go to find the answer to what is all this. So you would go to find the answer to when I think of all this, and how would you do that? Well, I would go back. Go back, go back. back. Go back to chapter two mm -hmm. to see what he said. Mm -hmm. And then, and so in other words, how can I preach Ephesians chapter three, verse one through 12, and not go Thank to chapter two? two. Go back. Or maybe even for as that's true. chapter one. Yes, yeah, so depending on what you need. Right. How can I preach that and not get that context? Mm -hmm. Am I crazy yet? Yeah, but y'all understand. Because <laughs> <laughs> I don't want Lorenzo to say, "Yeah, you is," you know. But y'all understand my point, right? <laughs> So, hey, my baby girl is on. Danielle, hey, hey, baby, good to see you. I know you're back now. You was up there in Georgia in the mountains. I believe you was. But um, I still want my dinner. <laughs> <laughs> Amen. So, um, um, good to see my baby. All right. So, when I think of all this, that means he, he, 
he's concluding something that he said previously. Exactly. And if you run past that, you're going to miss something. Amen, y'all? Amen. You're going to miss something. And so therefore, if you run past that and go straight to, I, Paul, the prisoner of Christ Jesus, for the benefit of you Gentiles, and I don't go back to look by what he means when I think of all this, who's benefiting? It ain't the Gentiles. <laughs> right. Somebody help me. Am I making sense? Now do you all see the importance of context? Mm -hmm. So when you so if if sin, I'm trying to behave. <coughs> uh, Ken and Grant, I'm trying to behave, but it don't work all the time. I'm gonna talk about somebody and, and, and nobody knows who it is but me. But he said it. Preacher told me. I get up on Sunday morning, open up the Bible, and wherever it lands is where I preach. Oh my gosh. Wow. Wow. And I said, Doc, what, 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 you mean to tell me you don't study? Oh, no, 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 no. I do study. I'm like, but you just said that you flip the Bible open, and wherever you land is where you preach. Y'all, I can't do that. I can't, I, I, I can't do it. Y'all look at me like I'm crazy. Bishop, did you prepare at all? Yeah. Mm -hmm. And even worse than this, y'all, y'all follow me here. If I'm just skimming through the Bible all week, but still got nothing to come and give you all on Sunday morning, I just wasted your time. Mm -hmm. You just came to church because we got a good choir. Hmm. Y'all understand what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. I ain't doing that. Hmm. Excuse my French. I, you, you know, I just spoke like I'm from Perry, but I live in Gainesville. <laughs> <laughs> Y'all understand? <laughs> so, um, Sister Walker says, study to show yourself approved. But if I'm wasting my time all week skimming through the Bible, skimming past when I think of all this, and I come in here and I still got nothing. Y'all, y'all, y'all listen. Um, I have a very nice study here in the church. Right there at the door, and I'm looking at it right, right now, it says my refuge. When I come in church on Sunday morning, I'm worship ready. And I got the word. I don't have to come in here on Sunday morning and go into my study to pray. Because I'm already prayed up. Yeah. I still may do it, but I'll come in here and give a good morning message and I'm in here in the congregation talking to our people. Mm -hmm. And I'm ready to worship him with everybody else. Mm -hmm. Same preacher that said, I flipped the Bible open. And wherever it lands, preach. Went to preach at another person's church. Y'all, listen. I ain't talking about nobody. I'm just trying to show you all how important this is. So, um, and I have to tell some stories. <clears throat> if I did it, I'd tell them myself. He went in the church. I think he was trying to impress somebody. And he said, um, Pastor, where's your study? I want to go in there to pray before I preach. Trying to be impressive is what he was doing. Bro, if you ain't prayed up before you get walked in that church, you in trouble already. Mm -hmm. yeah. If I got to go in my study to go over the message, that means I ain't went over it all week. Mm -hmm. When I come in here on Sunday morning, let me, let me tell you something. I've eaten it. I don't even have to go in it on Saturday. I can rest that day. I'm talking about me. Even though I will skim through it on Saturday, but I don't have to because I've already done that. I've eaten it, eaten it, eaten it, and ate some more. Praise God, somebody. Praise so by the time Saturday comes, I'm ready. I don't have to write my sermon on Saturday. I'm rest. I'm resting. So I can go to Deacon Green's grandfather 
So I'm letting y'all, all of y'all kingdom builders know that um, Deacon Green, his grandfather passed away. His funeral is Saturday, 3 o'clock at Faith Church. Amen, y'all? So anybody wants to go with me uh, can go. Amen. Uh, so at the same time that you study the Bible inductively, read it devotionally. Amen. By devotionally, I mean with a heart that wants to hear what God is saying to you. God speaks to us personally through his word. Therefore, as you read and as you study, don't fail to take time to listen to your God. Those are some of the best prayers ever. Um, I, I sometimes spend an evening not in the word, not in prayer, but I'm just sitting there listening. And God will speak to you. Mm -hmm. Just shut up for a minute. Mm -hmm. And quit petitioning God. God heal me. God feed me. God give me this. God give me. I want a husband. I want a wife. That's how you say it. Why? <laughs> Why? But as soon as you ask him for that, he's getting one ready for you. But you run and help God and go get it for yourself. Or go get him for yourself. Only to come back again in two or three years again asking God the same thing. God, I want a wife. God, I want a husband. He was getting one ready for you, but you jumped the gun. Mm -hmm. Be patient. It's one of the fruit of the Spirit. And when you're patient, <coughs> the first one is joy, right? Mm -hmm. The top three is what? Joy. joy. Peace. 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 And love. Mm -hmm. That's the top three. Mm -hmm. The trinity of the fruit. Mm -hmm. Joy. Peace. And love. What number is patience? Mm -hmm. By fourth or fifth. Mm -hmm. It's right there. So if you're going to jump to patience, oh, you're going to get the other three. Mm. <laughs> For sure. Mm. <laughs> Do y'all catch this? Mm. Cause we impatient folks. Mm -hmm. When we want what we want. Mm -hmm. Amen. Anybody ever been hungry and you went to Burger King and got that sandwich because you saw it on TV and it was pretty? Mm -hmm. <laughs> and you got home and got in that mess you saw, man, I don't want that. Mm -hmm. That's what we do mm -hmm. when we jump God. Mm -hmm. I don't want it now. Real but you already ate it. It's in you now. <laughs> Are y'all with me here? Am I making any kind of sense here? So, we're going to come back next week. <laughs> I'm glad y'all let me do what I do best. Praise God. Again, if anybody wants a syllabus, let me know, message me, call me, do anything you want. I will mail it to you or email it to you. Amen? So that when you come back next week, you can go along. Um, and again, next week we will be in Gulf Shores, Alabama, and we will still have Bible study. So we will still be here um, this same time and um, this same channel. Amen. So we have gone over tonight, part one, the rule of context, context rule. Step one, begin with prayer. Step two, identify the context. Very important. Step three, observe the obvious, because he's going to repeat himself like your mama repeated it to you to go get that Dixie Crystals <laughs> sugar. Amen. Step four, deal with the text objectively. That's very important. So when we come back next week, we're going to read with a purpose. You don't want to miss this because it's important, and it's in line with everything that we're going over tonight, and it's going to make every difference in your preaching and studying and living life. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God again. Praise God. Y'all hang on for a minute while Deacon Green comes forward and um, close us out devotionally. He's going to pray for us. <laughs> and also we're going to have um, a benediction or whoever he calls. Amen, everybody. God bless you. I love you. Nothing you can do about it. And we'll see you next week. Amen. Give the Lord a hand clap of praise. Yes. Hallelujah. 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 Amen. Amen. Amen.
great Bible study, Bishop. That's my pastor. Yes, sir. Amen. Let's bow heads in the word of prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you for this great Bible study that on tonight, Lord. Thank you for everything, Lord, and continue to bless us, Lord. Bless our bishop, Lord, as he blesses us, Lord, and just continue to strengthen us, Lord. In Jesus' name I pray. And for our benediction, may the words of my mouth, may the words of my mouth, and the meditation of my heart, the meditation of my heart, be acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, O oh Lord, O oh Lord, my strength, my strength, and my redeemer, and my redeemer, in Jesus' name, Amen. Amen. Builders. Amen. Amen. I love y'all. Ain't nothing y'all can do about it. <laughs> I'll be ending up to really be looking forward to hearing from y'all next week. And until, until, until again. Amen.